Hi, Kathleen here with Handmade by Circle Art Designs. Today I am working on project four for the July Bargain Bead Box series. You say, well now, Catherine, I think I saw you put up a number seven and you know you're absolutely right. This is a pair of earrings I made on that weekend that I went crazy making earrings and I labeled it as project four and then it got lost in the shuffle. So uh, we're going backwards on our numbering system and working on project four beaded hoop earrings with soft flex wire. This is a real fun little project so let's get started. So, as I turn my eyes to the mat, I am reminded to be simply grateful. Let me clean this off just a little bit. I don't know if you can see the dirt, but I can feel it when I put my hands down on my mat, and that, that makes me slightly crazy. So, wiping it off with some water, we're going to see about being simply grateful. But I am reminded to be simply grateful. And I'll tell you why. I alluded to this in my previous uh, project, but I was talking to a friend, in fact, this last weekend, and I was telling them that our car is here. And to, I was really simply grateful for that. Because as you know, if you've been following me, we've been without a car or at least a reliable car for about two and a half weeks. We only have one. It went into the shop two weeks ago. But I was recounting to her, I said yes, and this person took us to coffee, and this person took us to um, home group, and this person took us to get the, well actually they let us borrow their car for the bed and another person brought their car over so we could get to church the next morning. And the list went on and on. And as I was recounting that, I realized in my spirit that I truly was and am simply grateful for all the ways that God provided for my needs in these last two weeks. My family has had food. Our money came in and was in the bank. We had transportation. I had projects to work on. It was an amazing time. And most of all, there was more quiet time to spend with the Lord. And for that, I am simply grateful. So what are you simply grateful for? Have you taken time to think about all the ways that God has provided for you in the past week or maybe two weeks or even in the past 24 hours? Truly, we can be simply grateful. All right, let's get things ready, then put them down on the mat. First step on the mat, we're going to be using our 6x4 millimeter faceted rondelles in that turquoise AB from the July Bargain Bead Box. And then next, we have these 5 millimeter beautiful little pearls. They're a white glass pearl. We're going to be using those. I'm actually going to be using two of the Aqua Terra Jasper. We've used that in a couple of things. And I'm going to use some of the five millimeter rhinestone rondelle spacers. And let's see, is that all? Uh, we're also going to need, oh, I gotta straighten this up. I was trying to get it more in the picture. I bumped it and now I have to straighten it up. All right, let's see what else we're going to need. All right, and these are that crystal silver lined Toho in the 11 O's. We've used those before in a few projects from this uh, bargain bead box series. And let's see, get those all gathered up. And I'm going to use some of this bead in a silver color. 
This is beautiful. It is a bright white silver and it is gorgeous to work with. And I, I've used this before, but I don't think in this series. And we'll also need, if I haven't shown you, we're going to need some tube beads in a number two, and we're going to need the ear wire of your choice. I'm using some silver plated fish hook ear wires. So we're starting out with, oh, I'm kind of getting everything over so you will be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, yes, it's the number two tubes from Beat Along. You can use any crimp that you like. When I'm using Beat Along wire, I like to use the Beat Along crimps as well. I've used some others, but I just really like the way these grab the wire. All right, so I've put on one of those glass pearls, and now I am going to put on, I think I put on 20 of these um, silver, I'm sorry, crystal silver lined 110 seed beads. Yes, I am putting on a total of 20 of the 110 seed beads because that will give me about, um, I think it's about a two inch loop. Yes, it's going to give me about a two inch loop to finish with it or when I'm finished with it. And so I'm going to go ahead and put those on. Now you say, hmm, what are you doing? Well, I am not putting on the middle of it. So let's go ahead and check this out. See if we like this. Oop, I had a couple drop off, so I'm going to have to count them. Oh dear. And as I'm counting them, I really like this crystal with the silver lined in the 11 0. If I could find it in an 8 0, and I haven't here in my area, I think I would get those two because I really like them. I know that some of the beads dropped off, but Two of them dropped over to one end and the other dropped off somewhere into the, the pile. And so I'm going to have to count them again. But these are a real joy to work with. They have a nice sparkle. Yep. And um, it, it the finished product just looks so classy whenever you work with this these Toho beads. And, and they have a consistency to the bead that I really like. Although I use the other beads as well. Really, I may where I can find it, what I can find in the color I want kind of gal. But okay, so now that I've got on a pearl, 20 of the 11 O's, a pearl. Now I'm going ahead and I'm putting on three of my uh, rondelles in that turquoise AB. Then I am going to add a rhinestone rondelle and then the Aquaterra Jasper. This is a man-made Jasper. The July Bargain Bead box says it's synthetic and then in parentheses man-made. Um, I did get, because I used all of this because I loved it, I did get a very similar bead that I will be putting into my stash. Uh, same size, and it is called Sky Blue Jasper. It says it is a regular gemstone, and it is made, uh, it's a sedimentary, ocean sedimentary uh, gem, and I got that off of Amazon. And they also have something similar in a dark blue and something they call a royal blue. And I think I will be adding those. So next, I've put on another of the rhinestone rondelle spacers and three more of the, the uh, turquoise AB rondelles and then another pearl. Let's see here. Lay this out. Let me see if I can get you a picture. 
So looking at this picture, you will notice that my beading wire is still attached to the roll of wire. And I do that a lot of times when I'm not sure exactly how much wire I want to end with or finish with. Like when I'm doing a necklace and I want it to be 20 inches, I know I'm going to need an inch and a half on one end and an inch and a half on the other end because I am putting on a wire guard. And so I can go ahead and measure and cut it. But when I'm not sure, I always leave the wire on the spool. The spool, that was the word I was looking for. All right, so looking at this diagram, I started out with that five millimeter white pearl, and I'll explain why I started out with that when we get to that step. Then I added 20 of the 110 seed beads, then another one of those pearls, and then three of the faceted rondelles in that turquoise AB, then a spacer bead for my spacer I used rhinestone rondelle in a five millimeter then I put use the eight millimeter man-made aquaterra jasper then another of the rhinestone rondelle spacers then three more of the faceted rondelles and the turquoise AB and then a white pearl Okay, so that gets me through the center of this hoop earring. All right, let's continue on. So going back up the other side of what will be the hoop earring, I'm putting on another of the 20 seed beads and I'm really making, make sure you count your seed beads. And if you're not using a seed bead that doesn't have a lot of uniform in their size and shape, be very attentive to the beads that you're picking out because you want it to be a, as close to exactly the same length when you're making these soft flex wire loops, oh, hoops, loops or hoops, hoops as possible. So I'm, but I, I don't really have much problem with these and I'm, I'm going to be so sad if I can't find them again. Okay, and now I'm putting on the five millimeter pearl. So why am I putting that pearl on? Well, I am this actually where the pearl we started with and the pearl we finished with will be the very top of our ear wire of our earring so I'm counting to make sure I've got them right I always do that because I I won't lie I have a tendency to get easily uh, distracted I'm kind of like the little dog in the commercial that the squirrel runs down and he goes, squirrel, and then you forget what you're doing. So I'm always counting and recounting to make sure that I have as many on there as I think I have on there. Sometimes I have too few, sometimes I have too many. It just all depends on how many times I've had the phone ring or the dog bark, or the other little dog bouncing. And see, this time I thought I had enough, and I didn't, I was one short. So once I've put that on, I'm going to go back, put on my pearl, and now I'm ready. Now look at that, isn't that beautiful? I really like this design, and I have it in my design book to make a bracelet to go along with these earrings. I'm not gonna put them as a earring, bracelet set but I am making a bracelet to go into the shop in case someone wanted them for both and I I think that would be just lovely okay now then I have cut off my wire I know I know it's gonna be a little bit of a waste but that's okay 
Now, with the number two crimp, I'm going to put each side of the hoop through that crimp. The reason it the reason I'm doing that as opposed to two different ones is because I really want this to be a continuous loop. And I don't want a lot of bulk by adding two of the um, tube crimp tubes to it. But just like when you fold it over to crimp, you must make sure that you, I'm sorry, my hands are really shaking. There is my crimping tool. You have the big cir half circle at the back, and that's where we start and then move up to the front. And once you get it in there, you're going to just mash down the handles and you should get a nice little M. When you are doing a tube crimp, you really want to make sure you go up and down on that crimp and then give it a little tug to make sure that it really caught and then turn a half turn, go up and down again using that smaller front white circle, half circle, and that will close up your crimp. Now, as I was saying, when you're doing this, even though it's uh, not going back around and through the crimp like you would normally, because you have two wires in that crimp, you have to make sure they stay parallel to each other and don't cross because if they cross, just like with a regular crimp for a necklace or a bracelet, it will pull out. And so that's what you wanna do. Now I have turned my loop right here to the middle because I want my earrings to face front. If you like your earrings to be seen to the side, then just don't turn your loop. But I, I almost always turn my loop, unless it's an earring that's going to spin, and it's not gonna really matter, because um, they look the same from all sides. Now, taking a chain nose and a curved nose uh, pliers, I take the twist of one wrist, holding the other one steady, open it, and then I am going to go ahead and put on my hoop, and then I'm going to put on my ear wire and then again twisting only one wrist back to where it began I'm going to close up my jump ring touch the top if it feels rough it is not closed if it's nice and smooth you've got a closed jump ring and here is the finished product for this ear ring and I just need to make one more alrighty so, be right back. We back. Isn't that a pretty earring? And here is the second one. And I just love these earrings. And one of the, I find, the most attractive thing about these, this Jasper bead, is that it will twirl. And every time it twirls, you get kind of a different look on your earrings. And I love it. Now, do you see the way the pearls at the top keep that hoop centered because your ear wire is not going to just roll around the hoop? I don't know about you, but that drives me crazy. And so you always want something at the top of any hoop that you're doing if you're not putting beads all the way around to keep your ear wire in place, just like I do that for my necklaces. Aren't those lovely? Thank you so much for joining me today on this beading adventure. I know it's a short one, but I really wanted to bring this technique to you. Would you please take a moment and like this video and leave a comment? And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to this channel and help us to grow. And don't forget to click the notification bell Thank you again. I have really loved designing these and making them. After I played with these, I went online and looked on YouTube and thought, oh, people have doing this before and I'd never seen it. But I really, really love them. And I think it's a beautiful, elegant, easy, lightweight earring to wear and to make. So here are some pictures of the finished product. This is up in our shop at circleartdesigns.net. I really want to thank you for joining me today. I 
hope you have an amazing beading adventure of your own. Pull out your wire and try a pair of these for yourself. They are so much fun. I just love them. Have a wonderful weekend. God bless you. And I'll see you next week. Catherine, handmade by Circle Art Designs. Bye, y'all.